Today we'll be talking about six different roles that dogs can fulfill. How many of you look at dogs and just see them as pets? Well, we're here to tell you that dogs are not just man's best friend. They actually perform specific and important roles in society. The six most common roles that dogs perform are herding, rescue, show, service, sporting, and military working dogs. And we'll be explaining them in our presentation. To begin with, we'll be talking about herding dogs. Um, we have a comic up here that kind of explains the basics of herding and uh, how a man works with a dog with herding. The sheeps believe that the man and the dog are working together, but the group of sheep believe that it's just a conspiracy and that the dog is kind of doing its own thing. Um, we have three different breeds of herding dogs that show three different working styles. Um, to begin with, we have the corgi. And the corgi shows the healer style, which, as you can see from the middle picture, the corgi is nipping at uh, the cow's heels to keep it moving in the direction and keep it at bay to keep it the way that it wants to keep going. Um, that's how it just keeps it under control. Um, it's a smaller dog, so it can't really get into a, dog, uh, a cow or a sheep's face uh, without getting hurt. Next, we have border collies, which are the droving kind. They stay right next to the animal and keep it into position um, by just letting it know it's kind of there. Sometimes it's bump, it bumps it to move it in the direction that it needs to move in, um, which is known as loose side working style as well. Um, and that just is when it uses contact and keeps a loose body movement uh, and body control. Um, also in the bottom picture, you can see that it's kind of sneaking up on the animals, but it's just showing its predatory instincts, um, showing that it's a boss, that it's getting ready to move or pounce or something if uh, an animal goes out of, the, goes out of its uh, wrong way. And next we have the Australian Shepherd, which has been around for about 250 years. Um, it's a very, very reliable working dog, and it's known for the header. It puts itself in front of the animal, um, breaks its eye contact, um, breaks its will, and that's how it just controls it, letting it know, letting that, it lets it know that it's dominant, and it's much stronger, and it's in control. It also uses strong eye, um, eye contact um, versus loose eye contact, so it doesn't make body movement. It just stares down its, what it's hurting and keeps it in line. Now we have a video that shows the training and how herding actually works for dogs in the head. The Kelpie is on the opposite side of the sheep to the human, and that's what these dogs are bred for. They're bred to go on the opposite side. A lot of people that don't know much about sheep herding or about herding in general always get frustrated when the Kelpie's on the wrong side. That's when they're standing in the middle of the gate, when you're trying to push the sheep through the gate or the livestock through the gate. And that's balance right there. Perfect balance. It's when the Kelpie is on the opposite side, bringing the livestock back to you. You'll see that she does a little bit of a nip here and there on the heels. It will never, ever break the skin. Never break the skin. The Kelpies have incredible control and management over their teeth. And that's just to make sure that the sheep do exactly what they're supposed to do. And they stay in a very tight-knit group. Very tight-knit group, and that's for safety. You always want to make sure that your sheep are in a tight-knit group to make sure that you get them exactly where you want them to go without any sheep going missing. And look at that, a beautiful stop there. Round of applause for Jess. Yeah, how good is that? <laughs> just a little nip in there just to, just to make sure that she knows that she's still in control of these sheep. And you'll see the sheep are going to start doing a sheep pyramid here. And you can see this one's giving you his friend a hug. Yes. Very sweet sheep. Now, something to take into account is these sheep here are bred for this exact purpose. So we train all of our dogs on 100 different sheep that we have out at our training centre. And so they're bred for it. So don't think at all that the sheep don't enjoy it. They definitely do. They run into our round yards every day that they're supposed to be doing their work. And uh, they've got very, very thick skin. In fact, we're in the northern suburbs, aren't we? Who's got a BMW? Yeah, all you BMW owners, when you sit on your leather seats, it's these type of sheep that those leather seats are made out of. It's a very thick but very soft leather, and all BMWs in the world are made out of this African. They're called a Namibian white dorper or a South African dorper, and that's what all the seat covers in, in uh, BMWs are made out of. It's very soft but very strong, and that does allow, of course, some strength so that if a dog does accidentally bite a sheep, that he won't get the sheep injured at all. 
it's a two-day all-boy competition at Madison Square Garden in New York, and it happens every year. The winner for 2014 was a Fox Terrier, and this competition was a confirmation dog show, which means that it's not a comparison between the dogs themselves, but a comparison between the dog and the image of the perfect breed. Um, so the Fox Terrier won be because the judges thought that it looked the best and it had the best training for the breed that it is. Um, there are two trials, well two examples of trials in, that occur in dog shows are obedience and agility. Agility is when there is a golf, um, an obstacle course and the dog has to complete it um, with the help of its handler. The, it's judged by how fast it, it completes it and um, points are deducted for any faults. And then there's the obedience trial, which is when the dog has to do basic commands from a handler, and it's judged based on the level it's competing at. Um, uh, then we have my the three breeds I chose, which are the Great Dane, Irish Setter, and Yorkie. And I chose these because they're three of the top ranked when it comes to competing in dog shows. Um, for the Irish Setter, some information is their lifespan is 11 to 15 years on average. Their weight is 60 to 70 um, pounds, and some traits about them is they're affectionate and friendly with family. They're hard to groom because of their long hair, and they need plenty of exercise. Then it's the Great Dane, and their average lifespan is 7 to 10 years. Um, the weight is 100 to 200 pounds, so this is the biggest out of the three. Um, it's easy to groom. The general health of it is not the best, but it's again very friendly and affectionate with its family. And then we have the Yorkie, which is the smallest, weighing at 4 to 6 pounds on average and having the lifespan of 12 to 15 years. Um, Yorkies aren't always the most friendly, but they're very playful. Um, they're hard to groom, but they don't shed as often as most dogs do. Now we have a video on the basic training. My tick can get 200 times heavier after feeding on your dog. Kill ticks fast with Frontline TriTac for dogs. It starts killing fleas and ticks in just 5 minutes and keeps killing for 30 days. Ask your vet about Frontline TriTac for dogs. From the vet's number one choice, Frontline Plus. I'm Amy Dobell at Hounds on the Hudson. Today, I'm going to teach you how to train your dog to be a show dog. Training a dog to be a show dog is a great way to show off if you've got a really great example of a good breed and if your dog has good showmanship. One of the most important behaviors to train a dog that's going into the ring is doing what's called heel. Heel is a great command to train the dog. You begin by walking the dog on your left hand side. Once your dog is comfortable with being walked on the left-hand side of your body, you can begin what's called heel. What you want to do is slow your pace down and give the dog a treat while saying the command of heel. If you do this often enough, eventually the dog will understand that heel means that they should stay right at your side. Their nose should be right at your pant seam, and they shouldn't be too far ahead of you or too far behind you as well. Once the heel is trained by slowing your pace down, then what you can do is actually walk at a normal pace and say the word heel and the dog should come right at your side. Heel is probably one of the more difficult behaviors for dogs to learn, but with a lot of patience and consistency, you should be able to have your dog ready for the show ring in no time. Dogs fill the role of herding, recreational show use, service, rescue, and being used in the military. They're used for hunting, which is what they were originally bred for. Dogs have been used for hunting for hundreds and thousands of years and are still being used for it today. Today I would like to take the time to talk about three different breeds that are used as modern hunting dogs. The Spaniel, Bloodhounds, and Pitbulls. Spaniels are very common dog breed chosen for hunting. Which makes them so popular is that there's so many of them 
but they all fill the same role, which is gun dog. And gun dogs are a type of dog developed to assist in finding uh, finding game and cornering them and uh, picking up dead game. Next are bloodhounds. Bloodhounds are a type of scent hound which makes them primarily hunt or hunt by scent. They usually are chosen for hunting hogs and deer since they can track them over long distances and can hold down prey weekly. And last are pit bulls, used primarily for holding down large game such as large hogs, bears, and deer. They are favored for their locking bite, which allows them to hold down most game relatively easy, and their natural aggressiveness makes them ferocious hunting dogs. They are so aggressive that their no, uh, wild pit bulls that are left in the wild are known to attack uh, cows, as you can see in the top right hand corner. For training, uh, hunting dogs need to be socialized most than, uh, more than most dogs. And socializing is taking your dog and doing almost everything you can with it, to uh, get them used to being around you and getting them used to following your commands and stuff. Also, your dog. Also, it's uh, good to get other dogs to play with your dog so that they won't attack other hunting dogs. Then there's hunting training, which is the most important part for hunting dogs. Hunting training consists of getting an e-collar, which is an electronic collar that, uh, that stimulates the dog vibrating to tell the dog different things like fetch a down bird or um, hold down prey to make it easier to shoot. And this is a little video of showing that in action. Hi, Tom Dockin from Oak Ridge Kennels in Northfield, Minnesota, here on behalf of Sport Dog Brand. Hey, when you're pheasant hunting, there's nothing more frustrating than losing a down bird. I'm going to show you a little training tip to get your dog to believe it that every time you tell them that there's a dead bird, that there's one going to be there. I don't know, one. Now, we start this drill off by having my dog working out in front of me. I'm going to carry him with me, either his favorite training dummy, or in a case where you have live birds or a dead bird, where you can put it out there also. When he's out hunting, I'm going to shoot the gun, but before I do that, I'm going to throw the training dummy or bird off to the side. Hit up, call the dog back immediately, but make sure now, the whole point of this drill is to get yourself downwind and start hitting the dead bird command. Very important that your dog always comes up with the bird or the dummy and has success. Good boy. You know, it's our job as a conservationist, and the reason for having our dog out there for hunting is to come up with every bird that's knocked down. Make sure that you do this drill before the season starts, and you're going to come up with a lot more down birds. Good boy. All right, now we're going to talk about service dogs. I think we've all seen those cute little dogs that are in, like, classrooms or out in the mall or in Disney Park. You get closer, you see this cute little vest, and then it says, do not pet. That's, they're service dogs. We've all seen them. We think they're so cute. Now, they do a variety of tasks. They can open doors for people. They can turn on and off lights. They can throw away trash, different things like that. And they help a variety of people from childhood to adulthood, either if they're blind or confined to a wheelchair or have autism or socializing. Now, three common breeds that can be service dogs is the Poodles, yes, the Poodles, um, Golden Retrievers, and Pugs. Now, again, a lot of different breeds can be service dogs, so it's not just this. The Poodles, here you can see that they're sitting right now, but they're helping those in wheelchairs, and this one's obviously standing, but he's by someone probably either blind or has some sort of issue that he needs help with. Either it can be socially or physically. The, the Golden Retriever breed, now you see more of these usually because they're more social, but here you can see him interacting with this boy, and that might be, you know, just socially, or maybe he's kissing him because he was upset, or something like that. So again, socially, it helps um, kids' um, mental or physical problems live a normal life. Here you can actually see the dog is opening the door for the, wheelchair, the boy in the wheelchair. And I think that's pretty cool because not all dogs, again, can do that unless they're trained with the um, service dog training. And this, he has like a weird harness 
That's for someone where he can actually, they can actually hold the dog right next to him. And that's usually for blind people. It's instead of like a walking stick, they have the dog right there. And they're trained to warn him or her if they're going to hit something or run into something and stuff like that. Now the pugs. They're super cute and silly and sometimes funny looking. So why not make them service dogs? Here you can see, obviously, with the little vest. And it's just obviously hanging out right now. It's not really doing much. This one again with the vest. And this one you can actually see that he's with a group of people. Now service dogs can actually go into prisons where inmates get to you know, socialize with dogs so they lift their spirits so they don't get depressed. They can go into schools so you know kids will learn how to socialize with dogs. Anything, any um, institution like that. Um, the training for these dogs actually can take four to 12 months. Now that depends on the breed, how it reacts to the training. If it's really good in manners and etiquette, it might just take four months. But again, for some other dogs, they might be a little hyper, a little younger, it might take longer. Um, the American Service Dog Association is actually, um, well, it's a website, but it's an association that helps people who need service dogs to either get connected with them or if they have a dog of their own, they can find training locally so they can have their own dog, their service dog. And here's a little video of what dogs can do for us, and I hope you enjoy it. So as soon as the dog finds a, a scent, 
that dog's going to have to jump in as well as the train has to be prepared to help out the person who may be underwater. Uh, Newfoundlands are often used as this because their coat is water resistant. They have a thick double coat. Uh, they're strong, have a good sense of smell, and actually have webbed feet so they can swim well. Um, mostly dogs are, these dogs are trained as almost always search and rescue dogs. And here is a video on explaining how snow rescue dogs are trained. <laughs> consists of, uh, of course, all the dogs are under, uh, will learn patrolling, uh, detection, and only certain few actually learn the, the location, uh, locating bombs and or narcotics. Some dogs have, uh, get both, and German Shepherds is one of the ones that can do any, of, any of, if not all the duties uh, as a military working dog, which uh, brings me over to the Labrador Retriever. Labrador Retriever 
actually is the second pitch. It comes in real close. If it's not if it's not a German Shepherd, then it's going to be a uh, Labrador Retriever. They're they're more docile. They're they're still aggressive, um, and they still have that loyalty concept. They still are easily trained, um, but they're more so going to be used in the aspects of uh, drug searches and patrolling, whereas the German Shepherd would be used for attacking and make most likely bomb searching. And they would, they would be the ones that's actually, German Shepherds would be the ones actually going off to deployments overseas more often than Labrador Retrievers. Uh, also, a tidbit, a tidbit about um, military working dogs. Uh, they're, they're born, bred, and trained all at Lackland Air Force Base. Um, from, I'm, I'm talking about from born, I'm talking about from even pups all the way through to actually having a handler. Handler is the individual who actually is their partner. Because when you look at a military working dog, when you're in the military, it is your partner. If he goes down, it's like one another one of your teammates. So when I say handler, that's what I mean. And also, like, you know how when you serve in the military, you do 20 years and you retire? That's not the case with, with military working dogs. They're not going to get a check at the end of 20 years or whatever, or whatever time frame they're in. Then in all likelihood, what's going to happen with them, uh, they're actually going to either be transferred over to the local law enforcement or they're going to go with their previous hand, one of their previous hand handlers or the less liked, you know, the less liked upon uh, the general public. When they give it to the general public, you have to remember that they were tasked with something else. Um, so they usually use in, in that aspect when it's having to do with the public is uh, guard dog or, or whatnot. Here's a little video showing them in, in action. These same dogs can perform different types of uh, summary of jobs that we just talked about. Thank you.